every evening when the sun goes down Get with my party and I begin to cry I don't care what the people are thinking I'm not drunk, I'm just a janky I set him up, another round I set him up, another round I set him up, another round One more round won't get me down Hey, welcome to Rap Bomb History, I'm Pat I'm Bert. We're back again, yep. and we have got a very, very, very little known, actually a lot of guys, a lot of snipers out there have heard of this guy, but we're going to go into a little bit more in depth about him, and it's about the 1939 Finnish Winter War. Right, and we're going to talk about probably the most deadliest, hang on, I'm looking at the clock, and Deadliest motherfucker that ever lived this guy on was the a face of the earth. Badass. Okay. Let me tell you. Now, if you didn't know it, you can't say motherfucker for 30 seconds on YouTube. There we go. <laughs> Nailed it. Now, this guy is, I take it back, he was the deadliest human being ever alive, but he was also really humble about it and he never bragged about it. No. The didn't. dude was also about five foot three inches tall. Little dude. So he was a very deadly thing in a very small package. A little guy. And his name is Simo Heaha. Now, I know I'm going to get it right, but he's probably going to massacre this for the rest of the show. I'm going to have problems with this yeah. one. Just he's going to see I mean, come on. We, we, next time, we're going to do something in Icelandic, yeah. for fuck's sake. I mean, really. Now, it's Simo Yaha. Now, I'm just going to call him Simo for short and leave his last name alone. Please, thank you. Because that's easy. God. Now, check it out. Simo was born in Finland. Now, here's the deal about Finland. Finland Hakapale! <laughs> Save us from the Finns. Now, Finland was this country that, throughout history, is kind of wanted to be left alone. And they, you gotta figure, these guys was, well, originally they were Vikings. But they, they kind of want to be left alone, and they don't like it when you come in their turf. And so the Russians, the communist Russians, the Bolsheviks, found this out with a vengeance. Yeah, they now, figured it out hard. Now, you gotta figure, Simo, when he was born, he was born like 1905. But when he was born, he was actually part of the Russian Empire. So the first part you got to understand is why is Finland part of the Russian Empire? Okay, so Finland was part of Sweden, right? And Carl Gustav, a lot of you Ranger guys out there and Army guys out there might have heard of that dude, Carl Gustav. Carl Gustav lost battle to Peter the Great, all right, in 1709. And this battle was pivotal. Game changer. All right. The Ma Battle of Poltava. <laughs> yeah. Right? And the Battle of Poltava, if, if Peter the Great had not won this battle, if the Swiss and, it, oh, I'm sorry, if Sweden and freaking Carl Gustav had actually won this battle, it would have changed the face of Europe as we even know it today. No German unification. At all, period. Full no stop. No Russian Empire. Sweden would have dominated yeah. European politics for the next 100 years, right? <laughs> so, but Peter the Great won. And to everybody's chagrin, he won. And then later on, in 1809, the Russians actually came back, right? Yeah. To fight Sweden again. And Sweden lost. Peter again. the Greater. Yeah, I mean, Peter the Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the, so the Russians came back in like 1809 and tried to fight the, the Swedes, Swedes again. Uh, right. And. They got the shit kicked out of them and took Finland. Now, before I talk about the Russian Revolution, I need another beer. Bartender! Please. Oh, oh you need one too? Uh, <laughs> Addie! What the hell was that? She went to the fridge. Oh, beer wet! She went to the fridge and it was beautiful though. That was French. Thank you. I used to do ballet. <laughs> so did I. God, that was how many years ago? <laughs> Shut up for the peanut gallery! You can't talk! The mic is hot! Hey man, after I pour this beer out, it's gotta go somewhere. Oh, hopefully in my face. <clears throat> and she missed. We'll edit her hitting it. Oh! Oh, now hey. that time with the bottle cap. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Try it. Oh, Thank you, the lovely Addy. <laughs> Moving along. Yep. Alright, now, let's move forward another 100 years. We're talking about 1917. There's a lot of shit going on in 1970. Yeah, no shit. Throwing it out there. Uh, you got the October Revolution. So now the Tsar is out and the Bolsheviks are in. And what happens is... Because, you know, that improved the entire world. Oh, yeah, no shit. Jesus Christ. Now, Finland realizes, holy shit, 
the Tsar is out and the Bolsheviks are in and they're running around killing themselves. Let's become our own country. And they did. <laughs> yeah. So Finland declared independence, but now you got a problem. In Finland, you also have Bolsheviks. So the Red Finns and the White Finns have a fight. But in the end, because the White Finns actually have a hell of a lot of allied support from Americans and from England and from France and a lot of different countries, but they back them up 100%. So now the White Finns win. Now, what happens next is at the end of this, Finland decides, they get cocky. There's a part uh, that is, if, if you got, in, fact, in fact, right here we'll have a map, and I know my director will add it in, but you have two big giant lakes, Kadoga right there. and Karelia, and then you have this body of land that's like the only thing you could actually travel on to get from Russia to Finland, and it's called the Karelian Isthmus. Pretty damn swampy. Yeah, it's, it's swampy. It's a crappy piece of land. It's swampy up near the lakes, but down toward, like you get down toward Leningrad, and it's kind of manageable. Well, anyway, that is a seriously prime piece of real estate because whoever controls that little chunk of land controls going back and forth to Finland and Russia. Well, Finland gets cocky because they think, okay, we can kick some ass here. And so Finland invades the Karelian Isthmus and tries to take it back. Now, they do it three times, and each time they get defeated. But in the end, they kind of make a deal with the Soviets, like, okay, this is our land, this is your land. Because when they invaded the, Isthmus, uh, the, the Karelian Isthmus, what the Bolsheviks did, and I'm talking about the communists, the, Communist. the Soviets, Bad Soviet. they also tried to assassinate the guy who's the chief of staff of the Finns. They worked out poorly. They so didn't accomplish they that. both realized neither one of us going to win. We'll just draw a line right through the middle of the damn Isthmus. We'll take this half, you take that half. And everybody's a happy Sounds camper. very North Korea-ish. Yeah, very. And, but Very North Korea-ish. And so the Finns defend their side, and the Russians defend their side. So Russia's dabbling in Finland like, you know, it's their job because they still want these guys. Yeah. Finland, Finland in this interim, tar this in these interim years, like in the next 10 years or so, 1930s. Realize, they realize, whoa, this capitalism shit's awesome, and they're making money hand over fist. They're digging it. Oh, yeah, one, one reason because of this is Finland, one of the things they got from their agreement with the Soviets was they get this one port on the Arctic Ocean called Petsamo. That doesn't freeze over every year. Yeah, and so because they Total have a clear port, water port, doesn't freeze over, they can they can ship all their goods out of there. Oh. They're and, making money and yeah. I'm loving it. Capitalism's cool. Because you got to figure that a, a huge in, uh, thing export of Sweden, I mean, Finland is... Uh, basically trees for lumber and England uses this like it's going out of style for yep. their mines. Because but also, England's denuded itself of trees. Oh yeah, and the other thing is iron. Iron from Sweden comes up through Finland and out through there. So they're making tons of money. It's awesome. Now let's talk about the whole thing. This whole show is actually about the little five foot three motherfucker called Simo Hi ha. Hi ha. Alright, so Simo, Simo was a little dude, right? He grew up in a farming community on the isthmus, right? And he was like bounced up right up against close to the freaking Russian border, that false Russian border that they created, kind of like we were talking about North Korea, South Korea kind of thing, right? So he's bounced up there, and he 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 grew up Simo. That's later, Simo. <laughs> Simo, Hemo. Simo, that guy. Anyway, he grew up. He grew up as a young kid, and this guy is like feeding his family. He's like a child. He was one of eight. There's yeah, you got kids. eight kids. He's got, there's eight kids. I mean, in the they're middle. not Mormons, but damn near. He's kind of in the middle. He's kind of in the middle. And Simo is one of the dudes that is like, this guy's zipping around on skis in the wintertime, being the man. He's got a rifle on his back. Yeah. And what's he do? But he comes zip around and he's shooting rabbits. Yeah. He's shooting white rabbits off his freaking skis, right? So and the guy turns into a freaking epic. What the fuck? Turns into an epic. What the fuck was that? Um, so what happens is after that, Simo joins the White Guards, right? And he's like 17 years old, is what you do. He joins the White Guards, <laughs> and the White Guards are kind of like a National Guard, Border Guard, kind of Border Guard, National Guard. National Guard kind of yeah, thing. Right? Control. right? <laughs> it was, you know, because Finland had a compulsory service at the time, right? But he did this voluntary. This is voluntary. He, he just yeah, no, he just joined up. <clears throat> he just joined up and did his thing, right? Um, and when he was in there, they figured out, hey, this guy, this kid, he could shoot the hell out of a rifle. Yeah, he could. He could. That, 
dude was a badass. Yeah. And he started winning. <laughs> in, a, in a country full of people that can shoot rifles, that's yeah, impressive. They can they can all shoot. Fins are notoriously good shots. So he <clears throat> all of a sudden he's like winning. He's bringing all the trophies home. He's bringing trophies home and everything, but he wasn't like over the top. Hey, no, no, he was like he was the guy that was always in the back going. I, I, I won the I won the trophy. It's cool. I'm just a good shot, right? So he's did his 15 months, and the thing that was cool about it, of course, this is this is just after World War One, and yeah. and you know mobility. Everybody was trying to figure out how do you be a mobile army, and what are the cores that they had, and, and a lot of European units had that. Americans actually experimented with it. The Americans actually experimented with it. He was in a bicycle core. Yeah. He was on a bicycle where dudes on a bicycle with his rifle, and you know they're they're like it was it was successful in World War One. They were super really successful. You could move a lot of troops on a bike real quick. You, a guy on a bicycle, believe it or not, can outrun a dude on a horse in the long distance. And you ain't got to feed it. And you ain't got to feed the horse. Yeah. Right. Um, or you got to so, feed the bicycle. No, that's true. Yeah, you have to feed the horse. Well, you got to feed the horse. I know a lot about it. horses. See, I, I'm a horse guy, and I know about the horses and stuff. Let's go back to when he was galloping <laughs> on a horse. <laughs> Just for a second. I don't have any horses. Okay, we're done with that. All right. So, yeah, but he did so well in his in the bicycle corps. He rose to the rank of corporal. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, I mean, it's corpor- good for a seventeen-year-old kid. Yeah, seventeen-year-old kid, he becomes a corporal. So he's, like, a, he's a leader of men. Yeah, he becomes he becomes a leader of a few guys. You know, but he's a leader, and, and they recognize that. Yeah. Really good shot. Wins trophies, hand over fist. Right. And then, what happens? The Soviets come back into play. Yeah. Now, you got to figure throughout Finland's history, they, them and the Russians have always bumped heads. Like fucking yeah. oil and water. Now, about this time, the Soviets under Stalin, they start getting in cahoots with the Nazis. Now, what they did was they, they want Finland Ribbon to drop. become part of them because we, we, we don't trust one well, here's the deal. The Russians don't trust the Nazis. Oh my, really? And so Stalin didn't oh, quite trust Hitler, so he wants more allies just in case Hitler turns against him. So he tries to get the Finns to come in on his side. But the Finns, like always, were neutral. No. About the closest ally that Finland had was Sweden, and Sweden basically stood, was, was with them, but even they didn't have an official alliance. They were all kind of neutral on their own, kind of like an autonomous collective. Yep. Now. What happened was right before right before World War II begins, <laughs> the Soviets and the Nazis become buddies. And they signed something called the Molotov Ribbentrop Act. I said that earlier. Oh well. There you go. Now, the Molotov Ribbentrop Act wasn't just the Soviets and the Germans becoming allies, it was also let's divide up Europe between us. Yeah. So when we win the whole war and we are the masters of the universe, we, we already have a control. plan. We got a plan. So what happened though is Finland became part of the Soviet f- sphere of influence. Actually all the Baltic states, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, all part of the Soviet boom, 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 influence. They all fall So in. basically Soviets look at Finland as this is ours and we can do anything we want with it because the Nazis aren't going to stop us from doing it. And then the problem happens when freaking Germany invades Poland on one side and... Yeah, the Soviets hit them from the other side. And it was fucked up. Now, you got to realize, a lot of people, whenever they think of World War II starting, they think the Germans started World War II, but you got to realize the Soviets and the Germans started World War II. They hit Poland from two different sides. Yeah, it was fucked up. And, uh, no, and this will be a, we might get into this story in the future, F-bombs, oh, where, where Poland That's... was, oh, Poland fell apart. They're, they put up a hell of a fight, but they're being hit from two sides, from two major powers, and there's no way they could survive that. There's a reason there's... that there are Soviet mass graves of Polish guys. Yeah, I know shit. Just now, one month after World War II begins, and World War II begins in September, uh, so in October of 1939, one month later, the Soviets decided to tell the Finns, hey, here's what we want you to do. That whole Karelian Isthmus where you got those, that, that line, that defensive line, we want you to move that defensive line about, I don't know, 30 miles to the east because we want to take yeah, over the, about the Isthmus. about 12 miles. It's only about 12 miles. It's 20 clicks. Yeah, so, but basically, 20 no, clicks, no, 30, 30 miles. miles. 30 miles. Yeah, and, uh, uh, no, not kilometers, miles. Miles. Yeah, I tried. Right. What I did was I tried to translate this story into, you know, you know American measurements. But anyway, 30 miles. So basically, the Finns, though, say, no, fuck you. This is our land. And we're People's not finger. Win. 
Yeah. Fuck right off. Yeah. We're not doing that. Now, not only did the Soviets say we want you to move 30 miles to the east, we want you to destroy all the forts that is on the line between the two countries. They went, no, fuck you. No. Not doing now, it. Now, something else. All the Baltic nations, little teeny weeny countries like Latvia and Estonia and Lithuania, the Soviets pretty much went up to them and went, hey, we're going to stick to a Soviet base right here. You got a problem with that? And they're like, oh no, we, we love having a Soviet base sitting right here in our country. It's so Look at Zola's lobby in Estonia, and you're like, whatever. I love you're... a bunch of fucking borscht eating, motherfucking stinky ass, mother sweating motherfuckers right in our goddamn place. It's awesome. Please rate, rate, rate my women too. I love it. But they had to because they were outnumbered. Yeah, they're now, really bad. The Soviets did the same thing to the Finns. We're going to stick a fucking fort right here. You know, you know what the Finns said? Fuck you. All right. Now, <clears throat> Finland keeps refusing this. Now, the other thing Finns do is they realize, man, all their neighbors, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, they Fall got taken over. like dominoes. So we're, we're just going to start putting all of our forces on the border, and we're going to call them training. We're training. We're training. We're training hard. Yeah, we're, we're training really we're, hard. We're going to call up all the guys, and we're just doing... Nationalized training. All on the Karelian Isthmus. You know, yeah, because, you know, it's a huge training area. Now, this is all Kabuki theater, because the Soviets yeah, realized what's happening. So the Soviets are like, oh, okay, you want to play that game? Tell you what, we're going to take all of our forces and we're going to stick them on the border for training. And so what you have here is two angry armies staring across each other just waiting for a war to begin. Kind of like North Korea and South Korea. Yep. Very similar. Now. Meanwhile, this time, you want to talk about what Simo was doing at this time. So, Simo, at the time, he had gotten out of the army. He had gotten out of the army, but when they said, hey, we got to do this huge national training event, mm -hmm. he got back in the army. Yeah, everybody, back. everybody, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Everybody gets called back. He got back in the army, and he ends up in uh, oh, JG34. In fact, I have to pronounce it for him. Say it. All right, it is Yalkavire Kaminiti. Now, I know I'm not speaking Finnish. Anybody who speaks Finnish knows I'm probably laughing at my ass, but it's Yalkavire Kaminiti, which basically means 34th Battalion Infantry, infantry Battalion. Regiment. Yeah. It is an infantry so, regiment. 34th Infantry Regiment. My fucking South Carolina public school system education will not allow allow me to fucking say that shit. Yalkavire Kaminiti. Yep. But anyway, he was in the 12th Division. Infantry Regiment, 12th Division guy. Yeah. Right? And Timo gets. They remember him being a good shot. Everybody realizes his commander goes, "Oh, dude, you got all these, you got all these trophies." Yeah. And, you, and holy shit, you're a freaking badass shot. Yeah. They send him to sniper school. So he learns how to actually refine his skills. And he's like, "Oh shit, this guy can freaking, this guy can shoot the, you know, ass end out of a net at a thousand meters. We're gonna send him to sniper school." They send him to sniper school, and bam, they freaking put the polish. Because I'm sorry, you can be a good shot all day long, but you gotta have the polish. Next time on F Bomb History. Oh, they're back for their revenge! Get the grenade! The grenade! The grenade! Ah, the Came home last night, all full of lush. My babe began to fuss, and I said, honey, honey, I don't care what the people are thinking. I'm not drunk, I'm just drinking. I said, my. Another round, I said I'm out. Another round, I said I'm out. Another round, one more.